Hello, my name is Kevin Clay, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions Incorporated. Today, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the process capability analysis using Minitab version 20 uh, and also using Minitab's assistant. So the uh, process capability uh, it, it's it's a, a very important statistical tool uh, in the Lean Six Sigma toolbox. Uh, we use it number one to understand what our baseline capability is, what what our capability is to stick within our customer requirements in and in, in the beginning before the process is is improved, and then that helps us to understand as we make changes to the process, uh, what uh, happens to our capability? Does it increase? Do we have a better capability of sticking within uh, our customer requirements or uh, might, we might slide backwards? So uh, we need a metric to really help us to understand what the impact of our improvement is. And the capability analysis is a great, uh, a great tool to do that because it gives us um, uh, what's called parts per million defective, which we can you know, equate to uh, DPMO, which is defects per million opportunities. So uh, let me go ahead and let's, uh, we're gonna use the assistant uh, and we are going to go into capability analysis. All right, and I'll stop here and back up a little bit. I, I, uh, the data that we're using here is from a fictitious uh, company called Peanut Butter and Jelly Incorporated. Uh, this company makes peanut butter and, and jelly sandwiches for um, uh, kids and they go to school all over the uh, domestic U.S. Uh, and they are uh, the, their price for um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, their cost, their cost per sandwich. They, they make thousands of sandwiches a day. Many sites, many departments um, making, making thousands of sandwiches. And, and their cost to make sandwiches uh, has increased past the point um, of what they predicted it, it to be. So their, their margin is shrinking. Uh, now, they, they know this just because of financials, but what they don't know is what their true capability is to fall within uh, to fall within their specs, all right, when it comes to cost. So uh, we've got some data here, and this is data from that uh, uh, fictional company, and this is cost data, all right? This is a uh, cost of making a sandwich. Uh, maybe we take a sample uh, every so often and, and understand exactly what the cost is that went into that sandwich. So we're going to use a capability analysis to, to understand how well we fit uh, within our, in our requirements. Now, the great thing about the Minitab Assistant is it really does a lot of heavy lifting for you. Um, it, it makes, it makes uh, statistical tools a lot more uh, or a lot simpler for, you know, those that maybe aren't statisticians. So uh, we come in this uh, capability analysis uh, dialog box, uh, and it gives us a flow chart. Uh, and this flow chart just says, you know, am I doing a continuous capability analysis? Uh, analysis? Am I dealing with continuous data, or am I dealing with attribute data? Well, it may have been a little bit centric class, um, and and you might not really know which of the two that, uh, you know, you're doing an, uh, an analysis on. So what you could do is click here in this data type and the data type gives you a description of both of those. All right. So I look at this and I go, okay, my, my data really fits the continuous data. So I'm, I'm going to go this route. All right. And I'm going to do a uh, uh, capability analysis of normal data. Okay, so we are in the capability analysis. What kind of analysis are we doing? Uh, in this case, we're gonna do a complete analysis. 
all right? Uh, and, and our data is in time order. That means that we pulled it out of the database um, and you know the, the first row happened before the second row happened before the third row, okay? Um, our data is arranged in the worksheet. Uh, it's in a column versus data in multiple columns, one for each subgroup, all right? So we don't have that kind of data. Our data is all in one column. There, there are no subgroups, all right? We, we, don't, we don't have uh, maybe another column that says, okay, well, we've got um, capability data from uh, site one, site two, and site three when it comes to cost. But in this case, we, we haven't broken it down like that. So we're just looking at uh, column C1 and column C1 is just data overall. Okay, so again, we're looking at C1. Um, now, we, we've got two, uh, two options here, all right? We've got what's called a constant size for all subgroups or a, a column of subgroup IDs. All right, so what this means is, is um, you know, how, how much data fits into a subgroup? A subgroup in, in mo most cases is a, is a sampling, a sampling size. So let's say over here in my data, um, subgroup one is actually made up of three samples. All right, so in the column next to it, I would put, uh, I would put sample or samples and then I put a one, a one, and a one. Uh, I would select column subgroup IDs and I would, uh, I would click on column C2. And that then would give me a, um, uh, my subgroup IDs. I would have a one, a one, and a one, and then a two, a two, and a two, and a three, and a three, and three, all the way down to the end of my data. And so my sample size would be three. And, and those, uh, uh, those, that column would give me the ID for the subgroup sizes. So I, I haven't done that here. This, uh, in this case, this is uh, more of a service process. And really I'm not taking samples. Uh, each row is unique, all right? Each cost is unique. Each sandwich is, is uh, it, the cost is unique. So, uh, I am going to put a sample size of one. Again, that's because each of those are unique. All right. Rather than again putting a another column called uh, samples and then listing my sample size uh, again. If I wanted the sample sizes of three, I would put a one, a one, and a one, a two, a two, and a two, and that would be that would uh, tell Minitab that those three are all in one, uh, in one sample and it would average those out. Okay, now our lower spec um, is 1.32. Okay, now that, that just comes from our fictional uh, scenario. Okay, that's the company's, um, that is the company's uh, tolerance for the cost between 1.32 and 1.52, okay? And our target cost is 1.42, okay? All right, so we know if we go under that cost that, that we're starting to kind of shortcut the process, not to give the customer, you know, what, what they need in, in the sandwich. And if we go over that cost, we're, we're uh, all of a sudden starting to give away product. Okay, I'm going to hit okay. <clears throat> That's gonna give me a number of great graphs. Uh, uh, the, the graph that you see first is a summary report, but that's a last graph we're gonna look at. So we're gonna come all the way down to the report card. All right, and the report card in the case of the capability analysis really gives us a lot of good information about our analysis in our data. Okay, so in here you see uh, a circle with a, a blue circle filled in uh, with an eye. That's just information. It's just giving you information about uh, how big your subgroup is. 
Okay, but the uh, other three elements, stability, normality, and amount of data, this is really uh, helping us to understand, do we have a good, do we have a good data set here? And this is saying that your data is stable. Uh, the process mean and variation are stable. No points are out of control. Okay, uh, no points are out of control. So uh, it's normal. You have normal data. Okay, your data passes a normality test. Uh, and it says as long as you have the right amount of data, you know, then, then you can trust that. Uh, then it says the total, uh, I'm sorry, the amount of data, the total number of observations is 100 or more. So therefore the capability estimates, you know, should be reasonably precise because you have a pretty good data set. Now, it doesn't know that, that you have or have not taken a random and representative uh, data set. It just only knows what you, what you have in, the, uh, in that column. Okay, so we move up to the process performance report. Uh, this gives us uh, our histogram. Uh, it gives us our, our PP and our CP, okay? Uh, and our PPK and our CPK. So uh, we tend to focus on, on real capability, which is uh, PP and PPK. Uh, and this tells us, this helps us to understand where we are, all right? And so the, the metric that's really important here is the, um, the expected PPM, all right? That's kind of giving you the, the, real, uh, the, the real capability of the process, in this case, in the amount of defects that are gonna be made. Uh, and again, this is an estimation based on your capability. Now, that, that's a great metric because now you can actually put a dollar amount to that. If you can equate each defect to a dollar amount, you can then multiply that tons, that, uh, that uh, part per million uh, expected to go out of, um, out of tolerance or out of uh, uh, being a non-conformance, sorry. Uh, and then you can then calculate, you know, what uh, uh, your expected loss is going to be. So we go up into our uh, diagnostic report, uh, and it gives us, along with the capability, it gives us a control chart and a normality test. So this is just really for us to be able to understand, do we have a good data set for the capability? Uh, and then we have our summary report. Our summary report uh, gives us, uh, tells us how capable the process is, all right? And it does that by giving us the Z potential and the Z actual. And it says, does the process mean differ from 1.42, which is the, what we determined was our target, okay? And our P-value tells us yes. Uh, gives us a lot of good information again. It gives us our uh, PPM, okay? And, and this is the uh, expected. All right, gives us our percent out of spec. All right, so all of these, you know, the, these are really good capability metrics to help us understand how capable our process is of, of meeting the requirements of the customer. So I'll close that up. Give me just a second. All right, so hopefully you uh, have a little bit better understanding of the, uh, the capability analysis. Uh, my name, uh, again, my name is Kevin Clay. I am an instructor uh, here at Six Sigma Development Solutions Incorporated. And if you have any questions, please contact me. Um, my email address is kclay at sixsigmadsi.com. I will put that in the um, uh, description information at the bottom of this YouTube video. Uh, and I hope everybody has a wonderful day and thank you.